Good evening and welcome to... I should have looked up the episode number before I started recording. Uh, 119. Good evening and welcome to episode 119 of season 8 of Factory Town, where I think we're good for all the things we need to do. I was having a quick look at what we need to. We're trying to work through our Omni Temple offerings um, and to get all the things we need to. And I was having a quick look over here. Uh, and uh, once we get necklaces done, we need... Polished stone wards, elixirs. Elixirs are the only things I think we might have issues with, but everything else we're making. So I think we're good. Um, I just need to actually finalise the build around here, which I have an idea for, and had an idea for it many, many episodes ago, and probably forgot. But there is something else we need to do that's important. Uh, we need to figure out a way to keep our um, nexuses and things. We need to store 100 in here, and we're going to do that with some logic, and it's going to be very simple, and then we're going to apply it to basically every one of these i think including wards um including that uh, i did swap over the wards so that the uh, the second one was the nothing so i need to do that for these two as well here so um let me just very quickly uh yoink these over here and uh let's um bomb, 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 and we want to go wool cloaks uh and leather and shirts just just so i can get things in order to make life easier for myself to see things it's not important you can do it well without that you don't you you can do you it doesn't matter which slot the items are in it's just easier for me if i know the top two slots what's going on there so the top one can become an input um or well no more the top one's not going to come in the top one is going to be our storage of 100 um uh, necklaces and then once we are full of 100 necklaces we will then output them to the barn to go. So there's going to be 100 always stored in here, and the second one's going to become necklaces as well. He says trying to find them. There they are. Boom. Um, and uh, that will be our our buffer for moving out there. So let's do that as we go down. So this is going to be crowns. There we go. Boom. That's going to fill up, which is good, because this is never emptying anyway. Um, and then doing it this way as well means we can add, if we want to, the excess so the crowns for instance we can add that to the list to sell and there'd be nothing wrong with doing that because we would always have some in stock ready for us which is fantastic and wards although we don't really want to sell extra things uh, we don't need the money money is not important here and um, we don't really need to sell things here for happiness because we have many things that are filled with happiness medicine is struggling for some bizarre reason we're missing some in medicine i need to do something with that uh, education should have books being sold, but it's not, so we need to look at that. Um, this is going to... I, I want to get the Omni Temple offerings done first before I go around and start fixing all of these things here um, that we're selling and doing things and blah, 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 and whatnot. Uh, because once we get the Omni Temple offerings going, we can increase production overall of the entire city. And that allows us to make more books, for instance. So if, if the issue is we're just not selling enough books... The Omni Temple offerings can boost that up, so we will sell more books, which is fantastic. So, I think if we get that done first, prioritise that, and then it will be it will be better, better overall. So, you shirts in leather and magic ropes like that. There we go. And then all we need to do is uh, bop, bop, say, hey, would you grab? Oh, actually, let's remove the outside ones because otherwise it will just run the giant loop we don't do that uh, we just grab anything i think just empty this barn into this one and you should be fine okay so how are we gonna do the logic well really really simple really simple we need two blocks i think i think two blocks i think i think we can do it with two compute blocks uh um, so, so we need first of all, we need an inventory sensor. We need a way to tell how many items are inside the barn, and the inventory sensor can do that. It can sense inventories, so it knows what's inside a barn. So we'll grab this, and I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it behind. Uh, I think to make life. But yeah, we'll we'll put it behind just so it's easier to see. Um, I'd normally hide it down here somewhere, but we'll we'll, we'll put it behind. So, bomb there you go. You can also put them underground if you don't like uh, having logic box logic blocks showing. You can put them underground on any layer. Uh, I don't know if you can put them on the mining layer. You can put them on the mining layer. So you can even put them there and hide them completely. Um, 
So uh, uh, you can do that um, and put them underground. All you have to do is uh, um, when you want to link things to above ground, you select the block underground. Uh, you press G to come out and then you can link it to whatever's above ground. So, But I'm going to do it above ground to make life easier so we can see it. So on inventory center, and we want the inventory center to read this here. That's the offset. The offset is where it's going. Or you can just mouse over it. You see you get a plus symbol. And you just right click. And boom, there you go. And it has an offset of one, three, which means it's uh, one block this way, three blocks that way, which is the center of this here. If you right click again, it will remove it. So it becomes zero. So boom, there you go. Uh, we want the inventory center to read how many necklaces are in here. So we want to get filter, item filter, boom, and we want to uh, oh, pause the game. Now, if you ever have issues with, um, like I had there, see it's flashing and I can't click it sometimes. Um, it's awkward to click sometimes. That's because the inventory is being changed and it's reading stuff and doing things. If you pause the game, you can click buttons. There's no issue with it. Uh, the, the UI refreshes every time it updates. So sometimes you can't click buttons. There's any reason there. So pause the game when you're doing with logic. It's much easier. So we want to we wanna filter to necklaces. Boom, there you go. So we will now read how many necklaces. See, it says now zero. There are zero necklaces in here. Because there is. There's zero in here because they're being outputted. Our next one we need is a math block. Boom, 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 boom. Math block. Math blocks do maths. That's that's what they do. Um, you can rotate them around. They, they, uh, oh, oh, you click on them and press R to rotate them around just to make life easier. Um, and what we're going to do with this is we want to figure out if we have less than 100 um then we want to turn off these ones here and the way math blocks works are they take in a value on the left side you have a function and you have the uh, uh right value and then a result so it's, it is a simple math block so at the moment it's left which will be the input from our inventory sensor so if we click on this and right click on our math our math block we want to go process left value uh, the different values here are um the process left value means change the left value on the center on, on the math block and then process the information so so basically we change the number and then we ask it what's the result process right, right value is the same so you can have one sensor reading the left and one doing the right and it will process it you can set them without processing it so it doesn't output it just changes the number and then you can manually choose when to do it using another block uh, evaluate is tell it to do the thing you know bomb there you go and set value will change the uh, the output value at the bottom. So this result value here without changing the numbers in between it. So for a math block, that's not useful. It is useful for other blocks. There are many different logic blocks in here. Um, I, I did at one point. I do still have some tutorials up on them. I don't think they've changed all that much. Some of the some of the things have changed here. So, um, um, but, but hopefully I, I can understand this. This is not exactly a tutorial. I'm just going through what I'm doing exactly for this scenario. Uh, to see if anyone helps with it. Uh, and trigger output basically means just don't change the values, just do the thing that you did before. So uh, so it, it would do the same result, we just trigger the, the result. But we want to process the left value. So we want to change the left value to be whatever we're reading. So right now we're reading zero, but when it gets uh, necklaces in here, we would run one to 10, one to 200, depending on how many are in here. And when we process the value, we want to do something in the math block so we want to change this add because we don't want to add zero to one we want to change this to be greater than so we go greater than like this and that will mean that if the left value is greater than the right value and we can manually set the right value we can manually set both of them but remember we're changing the left value with this one so we'll overwrite whatever we're doing so we'll set this to 100 boom so if there is more than 100 nexus, so this the sensor will read, it will go, you know, it will start at one and then go up. If the value is greater than 100, then we want to output. Well, I don't actually, I don't think you need to actually put the output on that. So uh, uh, it, it will it will output a result. Now, what will happen here, actually, if I if I unpause the game for a minute, you'll see the result reset to zero. Um, that means that it's false. Zero means false. One means true. So if one is greater than 100, it will, it will result in a one. If one is less than 100, it's zero. And zero means off and one means on. So we can literally just take this math block and we can link it to our three grabbers up here. So if I right click on that grabber and go set active state, and right click on that one, set active state, and right click on that one, set active state. What will happen here now is the inventory center will read the nexuses. 
If the necklace is, and, and it will pass the number on, so it will pass on whatever, how many necklaces there are in here. The math block will then go, hey, if the amount of necklaces is greater than 100, then I will send true and I will turn all of these grabbers on. If it's not, I will turn them all off. Unpause the game, they will get switched off. And because they're all switched off now, our necklaces start to build in here. Once they hit 100, it will say true, so the math block will turn these all on. And you have an automatic system there which will now hold a 100 necklaces. You can set this number to whatever number you like, um, set it to 150, set it to whatever you want, but we want at least 100 here so that our airships can come in and grab 100 necklaces and everything will be fantastic. Um, you see it all flashing there, you've got the blue lines flashing and triggering all the time there. Um, that's an advantage of putting them underground, you don't get them blue lines. It's not so bad here because it's going through a building. If you were reading an inventory here to change something over there and you've got these blue lines flashing across the map, maybe you don't want to do that. There's other ways to do that with delta blocks and things, but we see there, there we go. See, it turns them on and uh, it drops down below a certain amount and then and then it turns them on and then it comes on. And then they will be flickering on and off and on and off, but that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, and then this gets some only when there's more than 100 stored in here. Then when an airship comes along and picks up 100, it will be down to zero. So then this will all just be turned off. Very, very simple, very easy logic, very dead simple to do. So I'm going to copy this block and I'm going to hold control and click it down here and here and here. In fact, I don't need to hold control. I don't know why I did that. Boom. And we're going to put one here and one here as well. Um, yeah, I didn't actually want to hold control for that. I just realized because uh, uh, right, we'll see, this is this is shirt. So that's this one. Uh, this one here. These, ba -bom, ba -bom. yeah, I didn't want to do that because that will that has copied the um, it's copied the offset, so we need to change the filter. So we change the filter to say blue shirt for this one, Boom. Um, and it says, Hey, look, you've got a value of 200. What I should have done is copy both of them, uh, because that will be easier. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that, we're gonna remove those I've done there. I just realized that I, I did that wrong because. In this scenario where we have copies of everything, everything is laid out exactly the same, this works. If you do it in a scenario where it's not laid out differently, it's easier to just manually build the things and manually link everything up together. But for us here, we can copy these, hold control and click them down. Boom. 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 It's not actually doing what I thought it was going to do. And, uh, ah, no, okay, so... So the inventory sensor has connected to the barn fine and it's connected to the math block fine, but the math block hasn't connected to the grabbers. So we still need to manually do that. Uh, you'll notice nothing has happened as well um, on them. Did I get that center one? I can't. Yes, I did. I can just about see. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but there is um, when I zoom in and I mass over this, you see the, the little white lines appear next to the grabbers just to the left of the grabbers between the grabbers and the barn that means you have linked them all together um, now you have noticed that, that 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 hasn't actually triggered nothing has happened here even though this is false because um the there are no nicotines in there so why isn't that triggered well because the inventory hasn't updated it's got to update at least once for the system to trigger what it's doing um you can force trigger it with um uh, i don't think there's a way to do it with your uh um, oh, you, you can click it and then click evaluate, boom, and then it will trigger. So you can manually do it down here. Um, and trigger output means that you would trigger the output of the last result without without changing any values. So it'd be whatever the, the previous value was. So, so you can do that. We want to change this to be blue shirts. Boom, and there you go. And it's triggered now because I changed the inventory. Something in the system triggered and it turned on because there's more than 100 there. Awesome. But let's just go around and do this. Active state there. Change this to be robes. Boom. That will trigger saying true because we're more than, more than that. Um, the order you do things in as well is important. Uh, make sure you you uh, like I am I am linking everything together and then changing the filter. And um, if you do it the other way around, it won't trigger um, first time, but it will trigger as soon as an event an inventory updates. If it ever looks wrong and you're not too sure on it and you think these should be off when they should be on, you can hold Control. And click them to turn off and on logic blocks so i could manually turn them off because i think they should be off and then next time the inventory starts it will do its thing so um, that's uh and always an option you can do but uh 
I feel this is working absolutely fine. Link that up there, and then change this to be wiring. Link these, one, two, and three, and then change this to be watering. And what should happen here is it will turn them all off. There you go, bump, it did that because there's no water rings in here. Link, and link, and link. I'm just right clicking on them to uh, to get that up there. When, whenever you have something selected, you'll see a plus symbol, which means you're adding a link, or a minus means you're removing it. Right click to activate that. Double click the thing, and we want to pick crowns. Bump, that enable. And then you're doing your thing here. Everything is awesome. Okay, why aren't you working? You aren't getting enough polished stone. Why aren't you getting enough polished stone? When you were getting polished stone, explain to me why you were not getting enough polished stone. Yet you did for a brief moment get some because I saw you trigger. What happened there? Uh, you got loads of water rings. Okay, so that's not a problem. You're the necklace train. It is going to slow down our trains because now we're storing a hundred more. So we might need to do something to speed this up. Um, which we do want to do. We do want to do anyway. We really want to get our polished stone faster. Because polished stone is also used in selling. Here, the Omni Temple. It's the very next thing we need to look at. So these are all good. These are all good now. We're all happy. That is done. I believe we're making everything we need now. Were we making elixirs? Did we actually do that? Did we actually make elixirs in here? We did. We did make elixirs. Awesome. So there we go. But this is another one we need to change up. Um... This, this actually needs to be uh, upgraded to one level. And uh, this needs to become elixirs. And uh, we need to do the filter on here as well. Not that we're selling elixirs anywhere, but we may do. So I'd much rather put in the logic now that I'm remembering it. Um, even if it's never used. Because if it's never used, it, it's not going to hurt anyone. It's not going to do anything. So we'll grab this logic here. Uh, now, I'm rotating the camera around 180 degrees. And I'm going to place this down here. Hold control and click. And it's not going to link up correctly. It's going to actually be wrong. What we're doing. Uh, I also want to do it to all these books, don't I? I believe. Uh, that was books. Oops. Uh, I put that in the wrong place. Um, but that's fine. Um, but oh, auto save. Um, this is now actually linking to here. Because the map works in a way, uh, is, is a grid, so the offset is 1 to 3, and the grid is actually that way. So, 1 is to the right, right by 1, so it's 1 offset right, and 3 up. Um, so, that's, that's kind of why you can figure out where north is. North is that way. Cool. So, our farm is north centre. Uh, uh, so, you'll need to relink that up there. Bomb, there you go. You can also tell... Um, a lot of times the blocks do face north on the round, so you see these shirts is upside down. I'm not sure why that's done a 180 on us. A bit weird. But uh, did these ones face the right direction or am I talking rubbish? No, these ones did face the right direction. I'm not sure why that's uh Yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um yeah, so we wanna we wanna do the same here. So set active date, set active date. Set date. And then change this to be uh, what is this? This is uh, the Red Book. Uh, strength Red Book. Um, and the thing is, this is wrong because we've now got 100 in here and it's only going to trigger if it's more than 100. So it will never trigger because we're never going to get more than 100 in here. So that's going to stop working. So we need to move these around and change things. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I am going to set this to be... I was going to set it to be 99. I think... Yeah, I need, I need to swap these around. I need to I need to move some things around and change these up in here. So, uh, But this this is what I, well, this, this is not what I was doing. I was doing elixirs and I've got myself in the wrong place. Elixirs are over here. 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 Boom. There you go. So slap that down there. Um, and see, this is minus one, minus three. So this now works going this direction. So, uh, so elixirs... Uh, oh, and I've done that in the wrong order. But now it's not going to actually fire the thing off. Uh, because there's never going to be more than 100 in here. But there is. There's 200 in here. So this is, this is actually going to trigger absolutely fine. So we've thrown 200 and we'll keep 100 spare. Uh, so, okay, so that'll work. I need to do something different with the books here. I need to take the barns out and uh, 
do different things. Do we have any trains selling these packs? These protection spell books? I don't remember if we do that or not. I don't think so. I don't think we've got any trains that are selling the actual spell books, which we do want to sell at least some of them. Uh, particularly ones for purple coins, I think. Uh, so we'll look into that as well. Uh, but right now we're we're not selling them, so I can hold off on this here. But we do want we do want to add the logic to this at some point. I just need to change some things up. But I, I want to get some some things working. Um, I'm, I'm going to temporarily get the Omni Temple offerings working, so I can show it off, and then. Between episodes, I'm going to build a big thing here, but I will record it. I will record it, and we, I will show my process. I have an idea. It's not going to be huge, but I have an idea. It's going to be like a big circle, and I'm going to show it, and then I will come back, and I will show you how I connected it all up and what I did. Because, again, we're going to use logic for plugging things in, because it's all going to be done underground with Omnipipes, so you won't see any belts in here. It's going to be just the, the airships will come along, drop in the silos, and then... The silos will uh, ship it from underground because we're going to have the silos underground by one block so they're on the ground so i need to use logic to tell the pipes what to do when and where because there's not enough slots underground i go underground here the omni player player uh, we've got uh five ten um 50, well, it's not 20 it's uh 16. Uh, 4 8 12 16. there are 16 slots we can access from the outside to plug into it and there are more than 16 offerings way more than 16 offerings so we're going to have to share pipes which means we're going to have to have some form of logic turning off and on things as and when the omni temple needs things i will do the vast majority of that sort of off camera i will record it and i will show it but i'm not going to explain it and then we'll come back and i can explain what i've done because it'll be the same for every every pipe every pipe will have so many connections to it um, and it's going to take me a while to figure out exactly what I'm doing here. And uh, um, that could be four episodes of me faffing around trying to figure it all out, which I'm sure some of you would like and some of you would not like. So I think, I think if I do it as a, as a, as a sort of, I'll record it and and uh, um, speed through it. I'll, I'll do fast forward footage and show show the building and then come back and explain how it works. When I know how it works, I don't know how it's going to work yet. So we'll see how it goes. But what I do want to do is I do want to actually try and get some working now. Let's get some Omni Temple offerings working just right now. Right now. So you want mana pipes, ether, crystals, and creme, which we now all have set up and done. So let's just get an airship running. Uh, or we'll get we'll get four of them running. One, two, three, four. There's gonna be an airship for each one. Oh, we don't have enough. Oh, we're gonna have to build a fleet of airships. Uh, we don't have enough mana stone. Uh, so we want uh the first one's going to be uh, Mana pipes. Uh, water ether. Uh, uh, water crystals. No, that's task. It's the wrong, wrong tab. Water crystals and crap. Okay, and I'm going to send them over to these um, uh, silos here. Because uh, I don't want to send them to the Om the Omni Temple because when one docks to the Omni Temple, none of the rest can. So we don't do that. We don't do that. Um, I also might have the silos like this, but might have like an airship landing behind each one. Maybe I uh, probably not. I probably have it actually direct directly docked to the air to the silo because the airship docks are three by three, so it's going to be it's a lot. That's a lot. So, okay, so you, you, um, if I come over here. Okay, so even though it has the filter on it, it doesn't highlight the building. I thought it did. I thought it highlighted the building, uh, but it doesn't. Apparently it doesn't. So um, we want to come to here, and we want to grab mana pipes. Boom. Uh, and then we want to go over to here, and I'm going to drop them off there. Click. Away you go, airship. Awesome. Uh, next one is um, water ether, which is... Here. No, air, fire, earth, water, water ether, and we'll put that on the one opposite. Oh. And I'm going to quickly have a look at our ether, 
Uh, we're storing 200 in here. Okay, so we don't really need logic or anything going on for that one there. That's, that's fine. Um, we would potentially output more than we need. Uh, you can also link uh, you, the uh, you can link to these connectors here. They, they can have logic connectors as well, fluid connectors, omnipart connectors. Uh, they're the same as grabbers. They work exactly the same way. You just link to them directly. So we could put a logic here to say, hey, don't don't output any more if there's more than 100. I'll leave it for the minute. If it becomes a problem, we'll, we'll deal with it then. And I should probably deal with it now, but... All right, water crystal. Zoom. That is here. And again, I should have a look at this to make sure it's doing its thing. I'm going to drop the water crystal off in the next one, the middle one. Middle one. Boom. Yep. And then you are crowned. Which we know is correct because we've done that already. Correct crowns. Drop them off in that one. Boom. There we go. There we go. Just want to, want to show how this works here and, and uh, how it goes. So let's have a quick look at the water, the uh, crystals as well. Ah, so you've got an input which is used for us for building wine. Um, because we need crystals to build things. But that's not really going to work for what we want to do here. So this is going to require logic added to it. No, it isn't. No, it isn't going to require logic to do it because we don't actually take the crystals out anywhere. No, so I can turn that off. Because we're not selling the crystals. We don't. We don't sell the crystals anyway. So I don't. I don't need that input one there. I don't know why. I think that was because we were outputting stuff for ourselves. I might upgrade all these barns as well. Kick the system into overdrive. Get it going. There you go. So we're now storing 200. So the airships will grab 100. And then we can always have 100 for our storage for ourselves. So there you go. So our airship is filling up. There you go. And he's off. He's going to go back there. Do we have an airship on the way back? We have two. There you go. There's you on the way back. On the way over. And we should have one coming to the crowns. Which is going to be here. It's really strange when you look at them. It's like, hey, that you are going over to there. But you, they always fly in straight lines. Like the whole game works in straight lines, other than when it comes to town centers, because they have a circular radius which just throws my brain off completely. I don't know why they're not square, like everything else is, um, and also I don't know why airships don't fly directly. Um, they, they they don't have to path this way and that way. I get like wagons and things have to path that way because they got to go around buildings and do things, but airships are in the sky. So why airships just don't go? from there and figure out a direct flight to here and back again and then all they have to do is move up and down the correct height I don't know why that's not a thing it's the choice that Eric the developer of the game chose to do um with it I just find it a little odd because like here see they've gone around that omni pipe because it's too tall for them <laughs> which is just odd I don't know why they just don't figure out the highest point they need to get to fly up to that height travel over and then fly straight down again I really feel like that would have made a lot more sense. Um, but hey ho, I didn't write this game. And I, I don't think I could write a game as fantastic as this one is. Maybe maybe in a decade if I just concentrated on working on that and not doing anything else. But um, I have the attention span of a squirrel. So yeah, he says on episode 100 and what were we on? 18? Uh, episode 100 and I don't know what... Um, uh, but this, this I enjoy. This I enjoy. I can, I can concentrate on this. But okay, so here they go. Here they come. Boom! And they go drop down on there, and then this will output automatically, and we get the Omni Temple. Um, won't get anything into it because we actually broke the connections to it. So I need to uh, fix that. Let's um, uh, require support. Yeah, of course it does. Uh, up. Boop. Boop. Okay, there you go. So it's got 10 in there. Um, and see, it requires two mana pipes, four ether, two crystal, and one crown, and four seconds to produce one work unit of offering. And it needs to produce 100 work units to make one star coin. So that means we need 400 water ether 
to produce one star coin. 200 in pipe, 400 ether, 200 crystal, 100 crown to produce one star coin. When we get a star coin, um, boom, uh, we can use them in here. We need 100 star coins to do something. Now the issue to this is you think, well, that's that's not difficult. We've got it now. We just we just did here. Once this finishes making its offerings, it will get a new recipe. And you have to supply different things to it in order to get your next star coin. So the next one might be might be the same. Might be mana pipes, ether, water crystal, and crowns, or it might be those three and magma. You don't know what you're getting. It's randomly generated every time. So that's why. We're trying to figure out how to supply every piece of thing that it needs in a system to do it. Um, but we are go. We are go. And this should give us one star coin, which is fantastic. And then we just need 99 more. So that's the future. Hoorah. I think we are building everything. I think we're doing everything we need to do. Everything is awesome. Yay. So we shall come back next time. And hopefully, we'll have a star coin. And I will figure out what we're going to build around here as well. I, I might, I might sort of figure the plan out, explain what's going on with it, and then build some of it. And then, and then, so next episode is probably going to be a lot of sped up footage in places um, of me building things, and then probably deleting things, and then probably doing other stuff here. Uh, this is all done apart from the stock levels. I didn't go around and check them, but I said I'd rather get the Omni Temple working, and then we can speed things up with the Omni Temple uh, overall. Hopefully, everything will be awesome. Uh, how are you doing for stuff? You are you are fine and we still have an unpacker unpacking things so that's fine so we've got loads of stuff in here and uh that's right we got wood why well, we've got some wood don't know what i deleted to do wood ah doesn't matter doesn't matter that that's going to be our our town center of uh of stuff so okay there we are. and there, so so it used up all 100 of the ether because yep it's full and it produced 25 which makes sense because 100 ether would be a quarter so it's going to be slow going. The airships are very slow at doing what they do. And they're going to be traveling from all over the world. Getting into here and out of here and doing things. So it, the Omni Temple offerings are not going to be quickly done. But that's okay. We don't have to worry about speed. Because there's no time limit on the game. It's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. So we'll leave this here. We shall come back next time. And we shall carry on from there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this one. And I hope to see you again in the next one. And until then, as always, have fun.